Major technologies generate economic growth, but the important thing is technologies developed today will largely have their biggest impact in probably 20 or 30 years' time. We see that with all major technological changes. If we're investing in technology, which we really need to do innovation in technology, that will generate growth, but it takes a long time. We see this with all major technologies. I mean, a good example of this is in the 1980s. Uh, Robert Solow, a very famous economist who got the Nobel Prize, said, I can see the IT revolution everywhere apart from the productivity statistics. Basically, he was saying, I can see the IT revolution, particularly in the United States economy, but the economy was having very slow growth at that time. The answer came is that actually economic growth in the United States accelerated in the 1990s way after the technology had been developed. And this goes to the crucial point, it's not the development of ideas that generates economic growth or has the biggest impact on economic growth, it's the diffusion of ideas, ideas spreading throughout the rest of the economy, often spreading into the boring parts of the economy, wholesale, retail, parts of the orthodox manufacturing sector. Investing in technology innovation is important for long-run economic growth, but it will not get us out of the economic crisis we're in at the moment. It will not generate significant economic growth over two or three years' time. It will generate growth in 10 or 15 years' time. If we're thinking about growth in the short run over the next two or three years, we're pr pr primarily thinking about how we can invest in infrastructure to get output going up and to get jobs going up. And of course, if we invest in better infrastructure, that would also help growth in 10 or 15 years' time as well. There's a real problem with using R&D as a good measure of innovation. Actually, it's not a very good measure of innovation. Only some sectors do R&D. Many innovating parts of the economy do not do R&D. They innovate in other ways. They develop new businesses, business practices, new processes, new ideas, but they don't invest in R&D. Also, we need to distinguish between the R and the D. A lot of firms do development. Many firms don't do research. Actually, just focusing on R&D misses the bigger picture about innovation. We really don't need R&D targets. It really is too narrow. We need to think about innovation as a much more broader concept. I think we need to think about developing a new innovation strategy that's much broader. Let's think about innovation operating within a system not just in individual markets. It's not just about R&D, it's about the innovation system as a whole. And think about how the innovation system works. And where it's probably weakest in the UK is in terms of the exchange of ideas. Getting ideas from one business to another business, getting ideas from university to businesses. It's the exchange of ideas, the exchange of knowledge, building networks that will help to generate a more innovative economy. Focusing on R&D is only one part of the story. We need to develop more focus on ideas and how ideas are exchanged and transferred. Sometimes there's, there's a fear that you're, you're going to lose your ideas. Often, actually, the exchange of ideas is quite time-consuming and it's quite costly, particularly involves people. Um, the ideas exchanged through people, through people moving across boundaries, moving from one organisation to another, people generating various knowledge exchange mechanisms. So the actual diffusion and exchange of ideas takes time and it's costly and involves people or organisations to do that. Often it's very difficult for individuals, very difficult for small firms. Bigger firms are much better at accessing ideas from outside their organisation than smaller firms are. So we need to help to develop networks that help smaller firms access ideas from other firms and also from universities. University incubators are great for developing ideas and exchanging ideas, but again, the focus on universities as a source of ideas is too narrow. We focus on science, technology, engineering and maths. We often ignore the benefits from the humanities and the social sciences that can also stimulate ideas that generate economic growth. And we're too much focused on technology transfer. Patents, licenses and spin-outs. They are important, but they're not the whole story. There's various other sorts of mechanisms through which ideas can come out from universities and go into business and other parts of the economy, including the public sector and the third sector. Informal advice, joint research, exchange of ideas through, 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 through students and so on. Many ex knowledge exchange mechanisms where you can get ideas from universities into business, into the public sector, into the third sector. It's not just about technology transfer. The big innovations we tend to think about are often called general purpose technologies. We think about the IT revolution, or we may think about now about the biotech revolution. And going back in history, we'll think about the internal, internal combustion engine, electricity and railways. These are big innovations. But there's often also smaller innovations that take place within individual firms, and they can be important for growth as well. We need to think about innovations, the innovation spectrum. That's the first point. The second point is that it's a big focus that innovation is good for growth. We may also want to think that sometimes innovation can be harmful. 
There's very little economic benefit or social benefit from the fact we've invented cigarettes and they're highly used and highly addictive. And of course, many innovations are really in that grey area. They can have some positive effects, but also some negative effects. We can, some may argue that nuclear power is very good because it generates a, an effective source of energy, but of course nuclear technology was behind the nuclear weapons. We can think of such things as CCTV, that can be great, it can provide some sort of form of monitoring that can make makes places safer. We can also make think it affects the, the independence of individuals to, to, to do their, follow their daily lives without being controlled and monitored. So actually innovation co covers a spectrum, there's many innovations are good, there's some innovations are bad and many innovations in between that are both in the grey area.